The following program is presented by the Nerdy Show Podcast Network. Geeky programming for all nerds across the multiverse. All Nerdy Show programming is made possible by A Comic Shop, Orlando's number one comic shop and nerd destination. Nerdapalooza, the world's largest nerd music festival, and with the generous support of listeners like you. For more Nerdy Show podcasts, community forums, and learn how you can support this and other fine Nerdy Show programming, visit nerdyshow.com. This is Dan Aykroyd, and you're listening to The Nerdy Show. Welcome to Nerdy Show, a weekly podcast for every facet of nerddom. From comics to video games to science and technology, if it's geeky, we've got it covered. Hi, I'm Cap. Hi, I'm Hex. Hey, I'm Brian. Hey, I'm Doug. And bringing up the rear, I'm Tony. He is always bringing up the rear. Every Ooh. rear. All of the rears. Hi, Hex. How you doing? Does <laughs> stop bringing that up. <laughs> the rear? That's his job. That's what you pay him for. <laughs> you guys are supposed to be paying me? Oh, oh, thanks. Shit. Thanks, hush, guys. Hush. Hush. <laughs> this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, what's on television these days, specifically animation. Lots, uh, you know, we, we, we cover animation a fair amount when we get the chance to. It's not exactly one of our, our main cornerstones, but it's definitely something that all of us do, in fact, devote a good amount of our uh, we're still passionate time to. Yeah, it. we're very passionate Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. You may have uh, checked out our special fan request, Adventure Time Microsode, not too very long ago. Because of that, we got a request for a regular show episode, which we'll have sometime soon. Oh! Uh- bunch of baby ducks so that's pretty cool i mean obviously uh, <laughs> brian i bring up the rear i bring up the rear oh, i'm sorry uh television animation uh we're we're in a really good point in time where people have finally recognized yes animation is for everybody it doesn't have to be uh, a polarizing thing it doesn't have to be for niche communities everybody can truly enjoy it it's as valid a, a medium as anything else much like the renaissance that comic books has had and is still having depending on who you talk to and um, I'm going to thank Avatar The Last Airbender for that in the 2000 era. Sure. That that it's series fair. more than, I mean, just between the compl- the layered storytelling where kids could watch the first season and really just laugh at it because there's a bald kid riding on penguins to the, <laughs> the subtext of this giant empire and the fact that it's almost about to win world dominate. It goes from like kids show to Star Wars over the course of three seasons. Yeah. I mean, Would you guys hate me if I said that I never really watched the cartoon, but I did see the M Night movie. Uh, you can't. I would hate you. I you feel bad help. for you. Well, well, what happened? Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As, uh, well, it's true. Though. I'm. I'm, it's I'm, true. I'm. I'm going to Baker Act you. I Why? Mean, I didn't say I liked the movie. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's like, oh I, I, everyone's talking about that Avatar, and I went and saw it, and it was a bunch of blue people, and it was stupid. <laughs> Wait, uh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Why was it the 20s all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta see the Avatar. <laughs> the Avatar. That sounds like, uh, actually, more like Legend of Korra. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, son, that's the way things go. You start back in the ancient Chinese times, and all of a sudden you're in 1920s Republic City. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. This yep. episode brought to you by Cabbage Corp. Cabbage Corp. <laughs> <laughs> My cabbages to your home. <laughs> So we've, we've, we've had a really great time for whether it's for all ages animation like Adventure Time leaning towards like teen animation like regular show Korra and Avatar both mutually being totally for everybody set at a young adult audience but dishing out something that is varied and dramatic akin to the, the stuff that uh, we grew up with like Gargoyles and Batman the Animated mm-hmm. Series which were real co- like uh, milestones in animation. It's like meat and potatoes now it's like that's that's it. Uh, the reason we're doing this episode, however, is because for some reason, a, a lot of dramatic animation that's been, you know, uh, very uh, recent is now very dead. It's not confirmed yet, but it's looking like uh, Tron Uprising is uh, is on the way out. Was the show supposed to be really good? <clears throat> the show is really good. It I is mean, really it's, good. I was surprised with how good it was. It's huh. it's all the stuff that Tron Legacy kind of missed out on. You're getting the same feel from Tron. You've got Elijah Wood as the voice of the main character, so it's oh, got it, some it star has, behind it. does the voice of Tron. In, like, every hmm. episode, uh, Paul Rubens is in there as a character. Um, the art direction... What? Yeah, I know. The, crazy, art direction right? is, the art direction is fantastic. It's it, gorgeous. In fact, it actually, it just won two Annie's for uh, for some design is stuff. Is there like Daft Punk-ish music yeah. involved? Yes. Yeah. It's, well, Daft Punk, <clears throat> they, they have the same guy who was arranging the music from oh, okay. the movie, 
working on the show. So, so you still have like these... the same setup from Batman the Animated Series where right, with Shirley Walker. Like Shirley Walker and Danny Elfman. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. And it's kind of bridging. It's on like... the design side, there's a ton of really high quality comics talent that was involved in setting the tone of the show and the storyboard and so on. And like it's I've I've watched the whole the whole season and it's fantastic. Um well I guess we'll talk more about this later, but the fact is it's uh it's not looking good. There was a public message uh two episodes before the finale where they said, Hey guys, uh if you don't watch us, we're gonna not have be renewed and and their time slot is twelve AM on Disney what? XD. Yeah. And then there's this artist I follow on Tumblr, uh Matt Humphreys, he's done a lot of storyboard work. He actually was working on Green Lantern, which we'll get to. And one of his buddies was a storyboard artist on Tron Uprising, and it seems like maybe kind of sort of he he's not working there anymore. Yeah, he got laid off. He, the uprising was silenced. Mm. Aww. So uh, clue one. Uh, like the Tron thing is very uh, upsetting. We'll get into that later. But uh, the biggest blow there was really the the thing that that's got us all here is the announcement that uh, Young Justice is not coming back. Um, what? It it I mean the we've we gave uh, Young Justice one of our uh, top twenty nerdy things awards back in two thousand and eleven. It uh, it really blew our minds. It is it, no shit. Everything that DC should have done with the New Fifty Two reboot. It, and I honestly think that New Fifty Two is jealous that Young Justice is this good, and so they're like, we must kill it. It it did feel like it could be a political thing. So you know, I've I've got to bring something up with it because one of the showrunners. It's it's actually funny, Cap, that you mentioned Gargoyles a little while ago because that was another Greg Wiseman series. It's it's not funny. It was intentional. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Serendipity winds up being a conspiracy. It's funny because it's intentional. Ha <laughs> ha. But Greg Wiseman did. <laughs> thank you, Hex. Gargoyles, which suffered similarly on the Disney Channel of not having an appropriate time slot, jumping around everywhere. And eventually getting canceled. Then he did Spectacular Spider-Man, which I don't know. Have it, did any of you see Spectacular Spider-Man? You, 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 you speak highly of Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man was fantastic because the same kind of layered storytelling that's going on in Young Justice, where it's like A plot ties into B plot from six episodes later, happens. In the first episode, you're introduced to Eddie Brock, Gwen Stacy, Kirk Connors, and none of them actually play into anything until later on. You're introduced to Flint Marco and the guy who would eventually become the Rhino as petty criminals that Spider-Man keeps capturing throughout the series, and you watch them develop. It was absolutely brilliant. Ran for two seasons, had Steve Bloom as the Green Goblin. Whoa. And got shit canned. And so apparently, uh, Greg Wiseman's lot in life is to make an awesome series, have it run for about two, maybe three seasons, and have it get canceled. Oh, and he was he was handpicked from the cancellation of that series for Young Justice, and then uh, he was paired up with uh, with Brandon uh, Vietti, as mm -hmm. I believe how you say his name, and he's, yeah. the, he's the guy who was behind uh, Under the Red Hood. God, that and, was such a good... As well as The Batman and uh, Batman Brave and the Bold. But I think you could see the direction for Young Justice a bit stronger with the Red Hood thing. Yeah, a little bit. Wasn't it the same animation team between those two movies, too? Probably. It and feels then, like it. I mean, you had, what's his name, Bruce Greenwood, come over from Under the Red Hood to do the voice of Batman in Young Justice, which was fantastic. Oh, that, I thought I recognized him. I only saw the, the, the first two episodes of Young Justice, but I'm like, that Batman's real good. Who is, <laughs> is, but if they carried over, I'm like, oh, that's why it makes sense. Okay. Whatever. And I mean, for the voice acting nut in me, to, Young Justice was brilliant. Anybody who's listened to the show knows that I absolutely love voice actors, and to have Nolan North playing both adult Superman and Superboy, and to hear the difference. He did his, them both? Yes, yeah. As it turns and, out. And a really good job. I thought he just did Young's, Young Superman, or uh, Superboy. Nah, he, do, he, I mean, Nolan North, he was able to just tweak the way he talks and kind of the rage behind it. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah, to so I, like, I liked him before. I like him even better no, now. So, That's crazy. Young Justice got axed, as did Green Lantern, the animated series. I don't think you'll find any uh, tears shed here. It was a, it was a tough road for I, that show. I kind of, I watched. I wa I tried. I tried so hard for Green Lantern, and I just, from what I understand, I never actually watched it myself. But the people who got into the later season or the later parts of the season, in particular. Really kind of fell in love with it, and I've seen so much awesome Tumblr work come from this series that its cancellation still, it, it stings my feels just a little bit, because well, it's... I'm going to be the jackass, the jerk face that just blames Green Lantern for Young Justice's term, uh, cancellation, because I can't see anything wrong with Young Justice. I can't see how that could have been canceled. Was there not a lot of people watching it? Uh, it seems like the fan following for Young Justice is pretty intense. Like it's it's right there. Any kid who's watching it has got to be in love with it. I don't know. If they've cited any real reasons for the cancellation. 
Obviously, they promoted the hell out of the and DC were, Nation are, are block. Like the animation teams but work on the same show? No, two different teams. Because one was computer are they in animated. the same building. Like it, I don't like. It's what? very likely that whatever the the cancellation was, it may have been political because there's a bunch of weird instances that surround this season of both shows. Um, Where like there there was a Young Justice episode ready to go. It was actually on iTunes for people to download. But it didn't air on Cartoon now, Network. They, this is under the circumstance of a, uh, there was a mid-season break. They heavily promoted the return of the show. They played two episodes of both Young Justice and Green Lantern. And then this show that was pulled, the, 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 all the programming for DC Nation was pulled at the last minute. So at the last minute, my DVR recorded a block of How to Train Your Dragon because mm-hmm. that's what they replaced it with. And it was actually released on iTunes for a hot minute before it was pulled. So I I think this plays into DC's new overall strategy of shitting its own bed. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even understand like everything on DC Nation like with the the, well, the Animal it, Man cartoon, like the shorts, the, yeah, the uh, Super Best Friends Forever. Uh, I mean, if you if you go as far as uploading an episode to iTunes, then going through the effort of pulling it, that sounds more poli- like Cap was saying, like more of a political thing where it's just like. Oh, let's start wrapping up the cables now, folks. You know, like, oh, wait, wait, you went ahead and put that episode online? Take it down because we're, we're, we're shutting this down. We have to let it, there's a, there's a process to this as opposed to it being genuinely like a slow dying out of people not watching it or a plea for help for people to watch it. Like I, as far as I was worried, none yeah. of that ever happened. Yeah. And no. fact, there's nothing. I mean, there was absolutely no indication that there was anything wrong until, until that happened. Uh, the fan following is very, very extreme. There's a bunch of petitions online. People who watch the show love it, and it's in a block where there's a lot of kids watching the show. There's a lot of adults watching the show. Anybody who loves how good DC Comics can be is watching the show because it's the place where DC is actually shining the, the brightest. No, and uh, the, after it got the news came through that it had been canceled, they people took to Twitter and saying, you know, let's save the show. Let's show people that they're still an interest. It went from like 1.4 million viewers on the episode The Fix, which was the one that aired just before the one that just went up. And the one that just happened had like 2.2 million, which is the highest the series has ever had. And they're still... And that was the episode where, oh, God, they somehow, they somehow, like, this show, what it does is it takes really campy characters and it makes them awesome. Yeah. Like, it takes Sportsmaster, who's always just a joke, and they're like, oh, you know what he's kind of like? Casey Jones. What's that? Casey Jones, a, uh, Olympian athlete. Now we have a badass sportsmaster. And with this episode, they had Apache Chief. Where Apache Chief, he's like, Atuk. And then he just grows. So it's like the opposite of Brave and the Bold, where it's like they take a really awesome character, they make it campy, but in a good way. Right, right, right. So and so like, so like instead of having him just grow really big, he has this astral form that just grows around him. You know, kind of tying Ooh. back into his Native American heritage, maybe? Kind of right. Like, wrap even that like, up even a bit before he, he, this power is unlocked, mm. like he, there's a whole episode where like his 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 uh, I think it's grandfather mm-hmm. is lecturing to him about how his heritage and how he needs to just like concentrate and and tap and, into and his heritage. To, to make it even cooler, he's like uh, I mean he he's a teenager and he's a high school buddy with uh, Jaime Reyes, the Blue Beetle. Huh. So oh, like man. and they're they're like basically discovering their powers together in a certain way. And then just for good measure, let's throw Virgil Hawkins, Mr. Static Shock in there. Yeah. Know, surfing around on a friggin' sewer. A- anyway, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves <laughs> right, here. Right, um, we, we got, uh, there's, there's additional, another show that was canceled uh, that begs to be mentioned before we get deeper into things is Motor City on Disney XD. Really incredibly designed show animated by Titmouse. Incredible fan following. Yeah, I, like this show looks like, like gorillas, basically like a gorillas post-apocalyptic animated series with cars. Yeah. Uh, if you can imagine that. And uh, so we're going to be talking more about all these shows right after the song break. Hex, what you got for us? What I have for us uh, from their latest album, Leg Vacuum, Leg Vacuum 2, we have Arm Cannon with Lightning Dogs, their metal and amazing rendition of the Thundercats theme song. It's called Lightning Dogs? Yeah. But it's Thundercats. Yeah. So that's what they do. They play around with the titles okay. of stuff. Because I might want to hear a theme song for Lightning Dogs, because that's I'm, that also sounds cool. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I want to hear that. Too. I want to know what it's the you Rule know. Sixty three of Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning Dogs. Well, um, Doug's put out the call. It's your turn to answer. <laughs> Let's do it. Why Here, not? Here's, here's Lightning, Lightning Dogs. Lightning, Lightning Dogs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just say no thanks. <laughs> So I guess you'd say lightning dogs. Wow. 
<laughs> oh, the leader's name, Dingo. <laughs> Wolfman Jack is her dispatcher. So. <laughs> Lightning dogs, get out there. <laughs> The one needs you. <laughs> Not as a voice, but actually just him. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of those awkward Saturday morning actual real world celebrity yeah, situations. Yeah, like just a live action sitting in the middle of everything he's, else. He's, he's, he has his radio show and he takes calls. Night, yeah, yeah, it's like that, that's his show. cover for at night, where it's just like when it's like doing the midnight broadcast, everything gets quiet. And it's like, all right, lightning dogs, do your thing. <laughs> That was what was happening between takes in American Graffiti. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's why he was at the radio station in American Graffiti. He's like, why won't this damn kid leave me alone so I can talk to the lightning dogs? <laughs> Only thing that can make this better is if Harrison Ford was the voice of the lead dog. <laughs> oh, <dear>. Dingo? <laughs> yes, Dingo. Richard Dreyfus being like, I want to talk to the Wolfman. Get out of here, kid. <laughs> You're not ready. You're not ready. <laughs> 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 Or even as a kid, I, I hated Lionel because of his dumb. I mean, what kind of name is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What... I don't know. <laughs> oh man, that was too good. That makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'll tell you what, lightning dogs don't have a snarf equivalent. They've got like arf. Like, it's, no, it, they, it's they, like, they got, because it's the opposite. Beast Hound. Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking badass one, like Beast Hound, who doesn't even talk. He just growls. Mm. Yeah, it's like with the laser eyes. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> like, he, barks, he barks and shoots lasers. That's when it's like. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Beast Hound? I see your laser eye stare. It's like, <laughs> you, clearly, evil is nearby. <laughs> Then Beast Hound has to run back to Wolfman Jack and be like, "Someone threw some like, puppies in the well." Like, the lightning dogs in trouble. Okay, I'm not. Whoa, picture, whoa. I'm picturing this as this bizarre merger of like pound puppies, the adult version. So wait, what's the opposite of Mumra? Instead of all right, so Mumra is just you know mummy, mm-hmm. but vampire. But no, that's that doesn't sound too bad. Glampire. <laughs> <laughs> Played by David Bowie. <laughs> and then we've got the, me- the metal dog. David Bowie dogs. is Glampire. It might be the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> we've got yeah, the metal yeah, dog. Somebody the, take the, notes. The, light, the, lightning do- uh, the, the, the diamond dogs that fight the lightning dogs. <laughs> the diamond dogs. Somebody take notes. He's I got have um, to draw this. Can we, can, we get, can we get Adult Swim on the line? Like, we called him on the phone. He was like, well, we got this recorded. Does Glampire exist? Because if not, I think we're on to something. I think we are on to something. I, th- I think that there are Glampires out there, but I don't think that he's going to wake up from his coffin and they'll be like, blah, the, the, the lightning dogs. <laughs> That's probably more realistic to what would happen in the show if it was Circus I Underdance. I am Glam- Bowie Glampire is the be all. I can't, I can't not see that in my head and, and in his, a good his, way. his henchman, Halloween Jack. <laughs> Somebody to write the uh, Lightning Dogs theme song. I'm on it. I'll find Who's the someone. opposite of James Lipton? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> no man is James Lipton. That's true. <laughs> No, well, the, well, you, said 60, you said 63, right? So it's got to be a, a, a gender swap. Um, so who's the Cindy female? Lauper, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Like... <laughs> I didn't <laughs> if I If I could even remotely conceivably emulate her voice, Joan I would. Jett. <laughs> That's Joan weird. Jett, Lightning Dogs. <laughs> I don't give a damn about the Thundercats theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Need another rhyme, yeah, lemma, lemma, ding dong. <laughs> Here's the song and it starts the show and here we go right now. It's like, John, I think we, you're phoning this one in. I, I feel like maybe we should just stop talking about what we were going to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> just have a lightning dog. <laughs> uh, episode three where they go to the mirror universe. And diamond dog? I mean, uh, uh, lightning dogs? Yeah, where yeah. they just sit there and they see the reflection of themselves and they're barking at it for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> They're like, who's that fucking asshole? The, look at these fucking cats. No, this and is, in, instead of Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat, you have the Terror Terriers. <laughs> these little Jack Russells that just pop around because they're just going to be. And was, gonna was, be every, Road no, Rovers I, was the other thing that was like the dog thing, or whatever. Just yes, like, tear them a new asshole, man. It's like Road no, Rovers no, are just too. Well, like, Lightning Dogs are alone. clearly one upping the Road Rovers here. No, I mean, obviously, the, you know, we could say Colleen from Road Rovers had a lot of uh, appeal. Uh, mm-hmm. The the certain certain demographics, and uh, so. Assumedly, the lightning dog's Chitara equivalent obviously would have a, a similar appeal. Here's another thing. So, Thunder, because I'm not as familiar with Thundercats. Thundercats was like a sword and sorcery 
Yes, more or less. Sword and sorcery, sci-fi, so really this is inexplicable be, was it, origin was, story. Was technology though? They, they they came from another world. Yeah, on a spaceship, on a third world. And and Lino is a child who is empowered. To, and there is so much going on. Because I was thinking, Lightning Dog. If, like if it's that, truly the though. opposite, then it's like instead of sword and sorcery, you'd have to take place in a futuristic like thing. Well, it's going to be a dystopian future without technology. But they love Samurai Jack's world. It's just the corner that Samurai Jack never went to. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Samurai Jack spinoff thing. But like instead of like, which is means we get Gandhi Tartakovsky. We're like advanced. We're like an advanced race that came to this world. So we came from a spaceship. How about it's instead it's a futuristic world, but they're like from the past, like prime primordial before humans evolved, the ultimate dog. Post apocalyptic. You know, post well, pre apocalyptic. No, I'd even say past. I'd even say let's let's go post apocalyptic. Oh, go, go that far yeah, we're future. going that far into the future. So you still have the dystopian kind of look in things, the same kind of He's talking about, yeah, I just want to try okay, to get, the, all the, you gotta, you gotta get this on wax because this is, uh, <laughs> this is genius, this is gold. we're gonna ship this off to Nickelodeon because they're the only ones who know how to keep a show going. I'll say, we, yeah, or we could just, we just want, if you want the short, the short end money, we can just go with, a uh, Cartoon Network and just run it for two seasons, put in that much amount of work, and you know, <laughs> so just six, on the residuals. I just gotta say, instead of six seasons in a movie, it's two seasons on cancellation. Poodles can be ferocious looking dogs. All you always get in, in animation is female poodles all dolled up. Get you, male you, poodle who's just like pissed. Male yeah. poodle. Like I'm thinking like, you know, with a, a poodle with an afro. Poodle with an afro. Oh, that'd be fucking kick ass. <laughs> poodle with an afro. Would that be their equivalent of Panthro? Yes. Yeah. So poodle. he's like their mechanic and talking, badass. Just a jive talking poodle. Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> Here. <laughs> no nah, man, I ain't going nowhere near that fucking building. <laughs> nah, fuck y'all. Like, fuck y'all. I'm gonna be back in the car. Without your damn mind. This is a really weird kids show. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Put your paws up. <laughs> no, you put that dew claw away. We ain't fucking with no dew claws. <laughs> dew claw. <laughs> and then David Bowie, the, the glam pyre, appears. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> hmm. Lightning dogs. <laughs> yeah, lightning dogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> disdain in his voice. <laughs> it's like the only he's the, he's the only person alive who remembers what humans were like. <laughs> he's been a vampire so for hundreds of years. This is actually David Bowie, then. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to shatter you like a cassette tape. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get back. We, gotta, like we do. Yeah, this we has been a fantastic tangent. But, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Back that was Thundercats universe, guys. <laughs> no looking back is the end theme credit song to Lightning Dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those really slow kind of pieces. No looking back. <laughs> get the part of on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Lightning dogs. They're running out of Mega Man. <laughs> so they're done with Act 3, Act 4, Lightning Dogs. We ain't never gonna turn tail. <laughs> we don't turn tail. <laughs>We talked a bit about Young Justice, we talked a bit about Green Lantern, we talked a bit about Tron Uprising, we spent a little bit of time with Motor City. It's it's a show on Disney XD, it comes uh, right before Tron Uprising. Suffered. So that means it was on at 11.30 in the mor um, in, at night? Yeah, and eight-year-olds are, you know, they're staying up late these days. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but I, I remember, I feel like Tron Uprising was actually on earlier at one point and they bumped it later. Yeah, it totally was. Yeah, okay, well there, there we go, yeah, so... So these they've they've maybe sentenced these shows to a death sentence. Motor City is officially canceled, unlike Tron Uprising, which is unofficially canceled. But here's yeah. the thing about Tron Uprising: despite that that fella being laid off, mm -hmm. it may it may be in hibernation or something. Because the fact is that they're now more actively moving on the third Tron film, oh, and yeah. uh, and they have sort of an imperative to finish the story they started, which is ultimately the story of Tron Uprising is how Tron became Rensler. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, so the show's a prequel to the Tron Legacy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. it, it is, it's about, Tron Uprising is about a rebellion that takes place on, in a, in a city that's not the main, like, central city from, from the films, or well, I guess specifically Tron Legacy. It's post-ISO war, so right. that, that's happened already. Clue has taken over. And, and in fact, um, there's a, there's an episode with a bunch of flashbacks to when one of the characters was in that, that main city from mm -hmm. Tron and has, the the ISO character from Tron Legacy with the the original actress in the show, Olivia Wilde. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And it, it was it was awesome. And there's um there's a Jeff Bridges sound alike for a couple episodes mm -hmm. that was uh, that was really good. And uh, this the series has been absolutely fantastic. When I first heard about it, it was to be a ten episode miniseries, mm -hmm. which I wish they would have done. I now I've enjoyed all the sh all the episodes, but it feels like they have in fact 
uh, stretched out the action and everything longer. Like they decided, well, we'll make it a series, and then they they stretched it out accordingly. And that's too bad because things are happening now at the end of this this season that feels like stuff that should have happened in the mid season, but they they stretched out the character drama, and that's okay if they had any assurances it was going to continue forever. Right. But with with a with a, a fucking practically movie budget on this thing with all these actors and all that, the, you know, that, the ch- <laughs> they got to be really valuable to the company. Otherwise, this isn't going to keep going. Tron Tron is great. Absolutely check out Tron. If you liked, I mean, if you liked Legacy, you, you may even like Tron Uprising more, depending. I do, it, it, because um, I, I actually want to touch it on It sounds just, better. It is, in a lot of ways, because I'm a huge Tron nut. Tron was one of those movies that I watched as a little kid that kind of shaped my life in a way and when i saw legacy i loved the hell out of it, but there was a lot of stuff that just didn't strike me as right the evolution of jeff bridges character flynn the just the the movie didn't sit right it was still fun to watch it still had a lot of that same themes but it just it didn't strike me as being quite there the way that uprising works the way that the characters are animated almost in this like pseudo choppy way it feels kind of like you're watching and, oh my god i just recently upgraded to hd on my television mm-hmm. the action scenes in that show with I'm gorgeous in, are, with an hd holy shit i mean it, it's the same kind of action as you've got in legacy but it feels better because that suspension of disbelief is gone you're watching these these computer generated characters flip around and do all the shit that normal people can't do and your brain's not sitting there going that's that's a cg character that's not that's not the CG. that's not the actor that's a cg character it's, right. it's really stylized and it totally works in in the first episode one of the, and we talked about this before the the main bad guy kind of like attacks and his attack is that his arms stretch they stretch everywhere and that sounds dumb right but it's not. It's not dumb. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It's like threatening and imposing because it's this little guy who all of a sudden. It's, it's kind of has has this like light cycle feel to it of how they stretch. It, it hmm. seems like uh, a logic that's that totally works within the guise of what would have been developed from the classic video gaming world that Tron comes from. And not it, to mention there's a certain thematic element to it that his reach is ever growing. You cannot escape. Yeah, it's it was it's it's the, like the dumbest idea made cool, and it, that kind of blew my mind. It's kind of that's that's the show in a nutshell. Really, <laughs> it's the dumbest idea made cool. Even though Midnight is a is a bum deal for scheduling. Oh my god, people die in the show left and right, and when they like they get derez, and it's gruesome. Like it's when you know they turn into a bunch of little cubes and fall apart. Right? Well, they they get away with the fact that that's not the same kind of on-screen death that you get right, if some real person right. died and they, they man they just go nuts it is <laughs> awful when someone and they do they use it sparingly so when someone dies you feel it even if it's a, just a background character you're like oh my god like hell first up ep- the first episode our our character our lead character's best friend gets de that's the whole call to action that's what gets him going and you you feel that that when he he gets conscripted into the games for a time and there's this guy that you meet for what like two minutes Mm. and you see him and it's like oh we're going to survive he's his attitude's starting to turn around and of course he's got two more days till retirement and here comes the disc and and he's gone you're just like in any other show he would have been part of the band you know they would have escaped together and it would have been like a chain gang and oh brother where art thou the digital version and then all of a sudden no no you're dead and i have to deal with that now <laughs> i think this this reminds me of something that uh rob paulson said when we went to to the uh convention gmx yeah gmx where he's I remember because I asked him something about like, oh, how do you feel about working on old turtles versus the new turtles? And he said, like, the focus on the story in the new time around, like this, this next time around was amazing compared to the original one where it's like people who are writing were fans of the originals so they can make more complex stories. But it seems like that's kind of happening with everything, like with yeah. Young Justice. And I had no idea Tron was supposed to be like that in depth or whatever but it seems like the, the, tron has a couple problems like it's it has everything going for it as far as the the drama goes but then they'll do things that they, that they don't need to do their actions could speak it's so well directed their actions could speak so much louder than their words and they'll throw in some really useless dialogue well, it's, all it's, the it's, time but what i'm trying to say is like but, it doesn't seem like just like a cash grab right like it doesn't like there really does seem to be people who are caring about and there is a story arc whereas like you know, the, the, like that's the thing about My Little Pony versus the old My Little Pony. The old My Little Pony was just literally you it saw was the there commercial. to sell toys. It was yeah. any Hasbro if you, TV if show. If you saw a commercial, you saw the show. Whereas now, mm-hmm. there's characters that people really love, and there's a story that they're following. Hell, I, even the turtles were that way to, to some extent because these yeah. stories didn't have any long linking thread. To, Nobody to there, a great extent in the '89 series. I no, like. yeah, I mean, because one of the things I've picked up. I mean, you talked to Paulson at GMX, but in listening to his podcast, he talks about this a lot because he's he's interviewed like the original cast members. He's gone through all this fun stuff but they didn't know they did five episodes and that's all that they thought they were going to get 
So there was no idea that it was going to go on beyond this. They had no idea what it was becoming until it had become that thing. With this series, it's somebody who's been a Turtles fan his entire life. It's somebody who right. knows exactly what these characters are to him that he's communicating to a new generation. Well, it's like, because uh, I've been going back to try to watch some uh, old episodes of uh, The Real Ghostbusters. Yeah. And they're good for what they are, but there's by no means a story that connects one episode to the next. Right. Like, whereas you read the IDW comics now. So good. I mean, it's, yeah. it's got a whole crazy story arc that they, they drop things in the first issue that don't come up until <laughs> volumes later, but in a good way. So I don't know. There just seems to be this this current trend of people working on these cartoons and stuff that are giving it like an honest effort which is very encouraging yeah but now the they're getting Star shut Wars. down so i don't like i yeah, don't understand and that, that's really why there was sort of a call to action for this episode because we we love these things we think this is the future and right and there's and it's not like with some notable exceptions they're sort of unanimously saying no it's not guys Talking back to Motor City, Motor City is kind of a halfway mark between all these things. It's a post-apocalyptic world. There's this fellow, this entrepreneur who's kind of reshaped the world in this gleaming uh, topside place. But then beneath that world is the place where things like cars still exist. And it's the sort of, it's basically uh, like mid or from, something? It's, it's, it's bit Final Fantasy VII is a good comparison, sort of. And... Uh, but Mad Max, but subterranean, perhaps. And, That's uh, scary. It's... Fraggle Rock, the evil year. <laughs> <laughs> Waterworld in a cave. <laughs> it, it, Keep going world. with the euphemisms and the comparisons. It, it's it's about a team of, of teenage burners, they call them. They're, they're like, they, they're basically a, a car gang, and they they're deal with turf wars underground, and this oppressive robotic society that this man's built, and his daughter is secretly one of the burners, and it's got a really cool dynamic, a really cool art style. It's not the strongest written show, but it has a lot Lots of merit to it it deserves to still live and uh and they said they said no to that they said no to young justice which is the the biggest blow of them all and uh and no to tron so um, in, in all likelihood unless they decide that it's it's a valuable asset for like the next film burners I mean, how not even... unlike the smokers from Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> and i just want to harken back just uh, last year we did a whole microsoft on a symbiotic titan yeah yeah that's uh, another one that was a fantastic show another one fortunately was... it's getting it's second leaf lease on life and with via toonami yeah. is man it's getting all kinds of new viewers it's getting the love it deserves which could give some hope to these series that just got canceled because it took what six seven months for symbiotic titan to come back with these shows that already have that kind of crazy following, because unlike Symbionic Titan, these other shows actually had a release schedule that people could follow. Right. They actually had airtime and... Well, sort of, because, I mean, we still had, like, Young Justice, where it's like, is it released this week? I mean, even even good shows, like uh, like shows that aren't necessarily canceled, like uh, Gravity Falls. Where Gravity Falls, it's coming back on the 15th, but... Of February. It, of February. Yeah. So, but it just vanished. There was no reason... So, I will say, having watched a lot of Greg Wiseman shows, that happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, young Spectacular Spider-Man would be like a four-episode chunk and then gone. It's like it's like that good friend of yours who's a drifter. He comes into town for a few days and you're like, oh my god, you're amazing. We gotta keep in touch this time. And he's like, yeah, sure thing. Man, <laughs> crazy, Didn't they do that with crazy the Tarkovsky Eddie. Clone Wars cartoon? Because I remember like when the Clone Wars cartoon, the, the 2D Clone Wars cartoon mm -hmm. was going to be coming on, I remember like I wanted to see it because I'm like, well, you know, let's, it looked kind of cool and I remember watching the first little episode and not realizing it was only like 10 minutes and not like not right. like a full feature thing or whatever, but then it was like, come back again next week or whatever. And I remember seeing the other one. Then after like two or three, I don't remember them advertising for it. I don't remember. It just sort of faded away and disappeared. And then I didn't see it again until it was on DVD. It did. That one was one that was weird because it were actually the first series was just these four minute episodes. Right, exactly. Yeah. And it aired at the midway point of the afternoon tsunami block. So it wasn't that it wasn't necessarily being advertised. It was just being advertised in a weird way. And it, had a very it was weird a weird show to it begin with as far as the yeah. format. It's yeah. also weird in the Star Wars canon because it's actually grouped it, grouped in in the same area as the Christmas special. It is. Well, I mean, Lucas I has, totally has disavowed it. Yeah. I mean, like, that, and it's a, it's a crying shame. I haven't shame. disavowed it. I, I haven't either. Well, in his position, though, wouldn't you? Because that is, like, about 100 times better than any of the prequels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, that these would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, as representatives of the State of the Empire, there's a good chance that, uh, I'd say speculat speculatively, that uh, Tartakovsky's Star Wars will see a resurgence now that Lucas has been dethroned. That's possible. Well, that's possible. Then we can hope. We can hope. 
I, I, it's de- a new it's, hope, perhaps. <laughs> wah, wah. It's definitely the direction that uh, the Star Wars fans that they're trying very hard to appease would prefer to go in. Yeah. Anyway, it's about time for a song break. Boy, I hope you got some more uh, lightning dogs for us. <laughs> no, no. Uh, since we we're talking so much about turtles, I thought we would play uh, TMNT 2012 by A Rival. It's a really cool remix of the, uh, the Ninja Turtles theme song. Rad. Well, when we get back from that, we'll talk a little bit about the new Nickelodeon turtle show, which I don't believe we've had a chance to uh, really talk on much in the, in the the uh, in the show we'll shoot i don't think we have either and i'm really excited cool 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 cool. well let's listen enjoy and we're back we're still talking about animation and uh not not talking about lightning dogs um, oh, no. as much as we'd Spikes like to everything oh. in me to not talk. <laughs> did you see the season premiere <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the two hour special <laughs> Who knew that Glampire was, was their the owner? Chain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna but, get the color around this conversation, eh? Yeah. Oh man! Okay, uh, <laughs> Brian, as a guy who deals uh, a lot with all ages comics, uh, predominantly all, all ages comics, how do you feel about what's happening here with the possible loss of dramatic animated television and, and maybe the dumb. politics? Yeah, it's. I really don't like the the more recent trend, like in the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years to really dumb down children's entertainment to super make it super safe and super nerf like Uh, because kids are are a lot smarter than they're often given credit for. You know, they the human mind constructs stories and understands stories and can deconstruct stories. It's just a natural part of the human thinking process and language. So you can give these kids fairly complicated stories, um, even sad, tragic ones. And they can deal with it. They can process it. They can understand it. And they can grow from it. And uh, shying away from that kind of material, I think, gives us really emotionally stunted, stupid people. I mean, like, could could Land Before Time, where within the first half hour, the main character's mother dies. Could, In a very gruesome fashion. I'm sorry, uh, which Land Before Time are we talking about? The first Land Before <laughs> no, I know, Time. I know what we're talking about. Yeah. In theaters. No, the only one that counts, yes, yeah. I'm aware. I mean, <laughs> could that happen today? Well, have you seen Land Before Time 12? <laughs> I well, believe you well, have your answer. Well, yeah. really but there's York. actually well, you, ha- you bring up an interesting <laughs> thing because it's like it's like Land Before Time was very serious and it came out way back when, but at the same time it was that version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where it wasn't very serious. So yeah. like you had both at the same time, and and, and now kind of this, we've got the new one. This problem that hit even Batman the Animated Series, which is revered. One thing that Fox kept pushing for when it was airing there was to have Robin be in there because they wanted something that young boys could relate to. I, I related and, to Batman. No, and that's that's the trick. Nobody grows up saying, I want to be Batman's sidekick. Right. I see myself in that little red and green guy. No, they say, I want to be Batman. I want to be the knight. I'm going to go jump off my parents' roof. <laughs> and really, the Pretty only much. the only kids who say, I want to be Robin is... The little brothers. <laughs> they're, 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 they're the little brothers or a kid who's just like surrounded by too many other kids who want to be Batman. And and, so like, or, or a little an, girl who read Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> as, an, <laughs> as an older brother, I will tell you, my brother never wanted to be Robin. He was Robin, <laughs> but he never wanted to be Robin. He'd fight him for it? It wasn't a fight. A fight <laughs> implies that he stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he's dead now. Huh? <laughs> Brian, you, dark. You, Brian, you told me that we weren't going to talk about that anymore. Because <laughs> there's only one pack. La- no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is goodness, Hacks. All of it. <laughs> Light and dogs. I mean, but the, the, I mean, it's like also like Secret of Nim. That was an amazingly dark and complex mm-hmm. movie. Can that ha- could that have happened? Today? Could, but even then, that's Don Bluth. Compare that to a troll in Central Park. Wait, another Don Bluth film. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, Secret of Nim came out at the same time like uh, Disney was doing, uh, like uh, the Black Cauldron, right? You know, so it's they, like they were running out of steam on certain ideas and stuff too. So it's like there's always there's always someone out there doing something good. I guess is the is the, the point to take away. And, from and it. this and this thing that's happening right now with dramatic television, this might not actually. You know, we're losing the shows we love. Um, though maybe Young Justice will have a, we'll come a chance at a third season and. I really do hope that this second season actually has a finite end. It seems like they were planning for it too to begin with. So I think we're in the safe, we're in the clear as far as uh, conclusion for the story. I think we're okay. Uh-huh. I, you know, there's a, this might not be the end of it. It might just be this weird setback. But I, I am kind of worried about the politics of Young Justice. I think what it boils down to, honestly, is marketing. And the people in power right now do not understand what markets these shows to kids. It's the same reason that Fox kept pushing for Robin to be in these shows. It's the same reason that Don Bluth went from making The Secret and M a drastically different movie from anything else that had been out at that time to Anastasia, which while is a fantastic animated film, is a Disney princess movie. 
Well, but in the, in the meantime, he also did a Pebble and the Penguin and a Troll in Central Park, as you mentioned, which I think really just boils down to his fascination with Burt Baccarat. So, you know, what... what I th- there, there is a bit of that, but sometimes I'm, sometimes you Lucas your own work. <laughs> Lucas, that's another one. It gives into... I mean, it's it's just something where marketing and financial decisions are being made based on what people perceive as the best profit, which doesn't necessarily equal best content. The content that Young Justice and Green Lantern are being replaced with is uh, a weird Batman series um, that no one I've talked to has very strong feelings about. No one really knows what to make of it. There hasn't been much more than preview images released. Uh, all everybody can say is, Alfred's got a gun. And I'm like, well, that's weird. What? I, I don't know why Alfred has a gun, but he was a spy in some continuity, so maybe it makes sense. And, like, I think Katana's in it. Um, what? I am, I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, and the other thing is Teen Titans Go, which is uh, a, a program that I've kind of got a little bit of a problem with. It's like, uh, they had the, you know, it's based on the original, the, the Teen Titans show from, mm-hmm. like, about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've been having segments, shorts in the DC Nation that were part of Teen Titans Go, and I thought those were great for what they were. Right. So now we have an entire series based on the chibi forms of Teen Titans. Uh. And, and I'm like, okay, you're worried about marketing demographics? What's the demographic for that show? It doesn't work for people who watched the show when it came out because it doesn't have the level of, like, at least pseudo-drama that the other show had. It's just haywire cartoon nonsense so there's no nostalgia factor maybe young kids will like it maybe but i don't of, think they'd feel very strongly about it of all the shows they take from dc shorts it's that right. i know we all wanted super best friends forever yes but lauren or, faust is or an incredibly wacky animal man voiced by weird does, does anybody remember the, the flash animated cartoons that were on online gotham girls or oh was, they were so bad they were but, but like this this is leading to a thing i was, I was gonna say yeah you're seeing tv change whether it wants to or not, where people are starting to realize you can put more things online. Oh, absolutely. And now Netflix is doing that thing with House of Cards, is yeah. it? Yeah. Not only House of Cards, but fucking Arrested, Arrested Development. development. Yeah. That's, and, what, that's what and, I was and, getting to. Where it's and like, Hulu is making original content as well. It's yeah. like, so they're realizing that there's this internet thing. And there's a new you distribution can, for You can put things on and people will view it there. And Netflix seems to really be picking up on that. What's not to say that, hey, they did Arrested Development. I, heard, I, I read an article earlier today that says people are trying to petition to bring Firefly to Netflix. Yeah, I heard about here's, that. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting, because not only is it these big companies, not only is it indie people who have just been growing up in the industry, the voice acting community has taken a lot of this on their own thing, and they're saying, you know what? I like to work, so let me get a bunch of my friends together, and we're going to do, like, I'm going to get Color Silas Rocky, who did Rocco. We're going to get, uh, what's it, Gary Anthony Williams. We're going to get John DiMaggio, and we're going to get Cedric Yarborough, and we're just going to riff as these four black guys sitting on the curb talking about things. <laughs> That's a show? That's a show. That sounds like a good show. What's it it's called? It's amazing. It's called On the Curb, or Off the Curb. What's it on? It's online. Awesome. It is on Mondo Media. Well, we'll Can link we to it. email it is... them a treatment for lightning dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know! Uh, by the way, lightning dogs, uh, as, you, as you no doubt know, is the intellectual property of Nerdy Show. Um, I, totally, I totally want <laughs> All right, John sure. DiMaggio. Yeah. I've been writing uh, everything down as copyright. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nolan North. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan, Nolan North as the, as, as, as the young strapping oh, yeah, 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 yeah. guy. So Nolan Young's North is Dingo, pop. and Pierre is played by John DiMaggio. Yes. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> hell, up no, as, as the John DiMaggio, Tracy Morgan impression. <laughs> Uh, so okay, uh, no more lightning dogs. Yeah, we we, got, we should talk about turtles a little bit right now. Yeah, we, yeah, should, we should because should. turtles is absolutely uh, uh, fucking amazing. The the, the the Nickelodeon turtles is is an interesting middle ground between uh, dramatic and comedic. It definitely, I say a halfway point between the incredible, uh, very dramatic 2003 turtle series, which I recommend everybody check out, and the you know. Uh, oftentimes extremely subpar 89 series um, that everyone uh, holds in such reverence even though it doesn't deserve it um, <laughs> man hard truth with cap <laughs> like, hey this has been hard truth with cap on the nerdy show network I respect bombs I respect cap I respect it because of the important role it played in you know the the fame the of turtle, turtles yeah. but mm-hmm. but it is not a good show and uh, so the 2003 show really heavily based on the co- on the uh, comic books and uh, this new show there was a, a weird lo- middle like you said a weird middle ground was, between them there was a lot riding on this because it could have gone a lot of different ways you know idw and their new turtles comics have drastically reimagined their own universe for things and so who knew what was going to happen with this like the turtles origin story is all kinds of crazy in the idw thing it's yeah. not what you expect and i'm happy to see that the nickelodeon show is very true to the the, the everything that worked about the the origin story and what you have is a show that has some really 
pretty nice look looking with the exception of humans but pretty nice looking cgi animation definitely uses fight choreography to its fullest as far as the forms available and, and the teenage mutant ninja turtles are teenagers yes proper that's the best fucking part. teenagers the, the turtles work on so many levels that they usually don't get a chance to they are really dynamic lovable real characters and it's actually it's funny that we bring up teen titans because Ciro neely is the showrunner Ciro Neely ran Teen Titans exactly. last time around. And, uh, and Michelangelo's Beast Boy. Yes, Greg Sipes. And he is, he is Michelangelo. Period. I, you talk to this guy in person, yeah. he is his, Michelangelo. His persona and his attitude about it is great. I do think that they made Mikey too stupid. I honestly do. But he does have the kid brother appeal in the show so far. I mean, it's it, he just, he strikes that note so perfectly as he's sitting there trying i mean there's a scene where he's struggling between playing a video game and having to eat pizza and it's back and forth and he just slams his face down on the pizza and winds up with a slice in his mouth and it's perfect that's exactly what mikey would do <laughs> having paulson come back and do donatello completely uh, different paulson's donatello did. is so good it is so good the whole cast the whole cast is brilliant sean astin sean astin is Raphael. holy fuck and and man, Splinter. Splinter's great. He's got this really amazing attitude of like the whole, uh, he has the whole master persona, right? But he, he's, uh, also he's got this, this kind of like, dad. This goofy dad thing too. And it's, it's amazing. It's, it's all of the, the character balances are really, really sharp. And if you think, and the don't origin, touch any door handles, you don't know where those have been. <laughs> As I say, and if you think the origin on the show is weird, I hear there's a script online for a feature film <laughs> that is even weirder. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I liked it. <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> you get you're dangerous here, Doug. You're dangerous. <laughs> but one of my favorite touches on this new sheer on this new turtle show, first off, because this is also this episode brought to you by my love for Nolan North. He is the voice of the Krang. Every single Krang really? is Nolan North. Yeah, they have changed the Krang dynamic, so it's not it's not the Utrams any anymore. It's this whole uh I am the Krang alien race called the Krang that all seem to have sort of a kind of a hive mind going on. Um and they all they all present themselves as these weird awkward human businessmen. We are the Krang who refer to themselves as the Krang. Is Nolan North the new Kevin Conroy? No. Nolan North is no, I mean, it's it's not that he's the new Kevin Conroy, because Kevin Conroy was Batman, and he was an excellent Batman. Nolan North is everybody. <laughs> he is the he is the closest thing that voice acting has to a Brad Pitt. Tony, you only think that because you have a man crush on him. Yeah. Yes, this is true. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm starting to get a man crush on him. I had no idea. He, I only knew him he's as Nathan Drake. He's making a good case. I'm not saying he's not. Yeah. I, I, I only knew him as Nathan Drake, and he already had my heart then. And now I'm hearing he's like, he's, boy, he's also Superman? He's also Superboy? He's also Krang? Like, <laughs> what's he not doing? <laughs> Nothing, really. I mean, he and Steve Bloom are vying for most voices in video games. Good for them. That's, that's now, awesome. what was the, the connection with him and Deadpool? He is Deadpool. <laughs> In like in the the video game that uh, he's, Daniel no, 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 the video game, the voice. he's no he is the voice of Deadpool. He improved half the lines in the Hulk versus Deadpool. Which wait wait, uh, Nolan, wait, wait. we're talking about Nolan North still. Yes, Nolan North was Deadpool. Is Deadpool in in Hulk versus Wolverine? Yes, Deadpool. He, like Nolan North played Deadpool, and it was he was Deadpool. He is Deadpool to the point where Ryan Reynolds uses that performance as kind of his basis for being Deadpool. Did he do the voice of Deadpool in, like, Marvel vs. Capcom? Yes. Damn. Chimichanga! <laughs> He's my new favorite guy. It just happened. It just happened right now. It's like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nolan North Can, we get, Nolan hour? North? Can we get Nolan North on, uh, uh, on, the, on the, something new Star Wars thing yes, or whatever? Like, on the new Star Wars show? Or yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure he's, <laughs> he's in Star Wars somewhere. If not, he should be. For realsies? I believe so. In like, Star Wars? Oh, he's probably in Star Wars 1313. Why the hell not? He oh, better I mean, be. Star Wars, the, the demo was charted saw, in space is what it looked yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. That's. I wouldn't be surprised if he was the leading man. Is because most times if there is... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie. Yes, he is. <laughs> you stay the fuck away from my man. Right, so, it, you know, as far as uh, any... We can't offer any kind of, you know, real conclusion here. We can only say that, you know, dramatic shows are very important to us. They, they span generations. They're for kids. They're for adults. They're an important part of our entertainment. And they can't go anywhere because they're awesome. So what will happen, we don't know. But, you know, if you want to sign the petitions for Young Justice slash Green Lantern, you know, please do. Get them on keep, Netflix. Uh, keep an eye out for maybe a Motor City video game. I, I know there was, a, there was some kind of um, one of the creators or one of the people who was developing it said something to the, uh, to the effect of, it turns out when you, um, 
when your property gets canceled and you have all these interesting legalities with Disney and so on, you can actually um, still you make can a break out into other mediums to continue your story. So th- that's been heavily hinted to that uh, possi- some kind of Titmouse product, probably Motor City, is going to get continued in video game form, which is very cool. And, uh, you know, what will happen with Tron? Well, time will tell. Doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound good. Uh, but at least, uh, you know, we still got Turtles. Uh, Korra's coming out sometime. I don't know if we've got a le- release yeah, date or sometime what. Sometime later this year, I think. Oh, it better be. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't announced anything. I'm crying. I know the art book's coming out soon. I'm excited for that. Mm. Well, uh, but before we go, I want to play a little game. I um, want to play uh, some Adventure Time Mad Libs. Yay! Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm we- still reeling over Motor City Water World. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this, this is not a coincidence. Something's I, going on. I think you actually might be on to something. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry possible. to interrupt the Madeline. No, it, it's all right. It's all right. We, t- we talked about this in our it, um, in our Adventure Time app, uh, Microsoft. We found out that this existed, and so I ordered it. Mm-hmm. So this uh, this particular Mad Lib is called um, <laughs> "Why Don't You Love Me, Princesses Everywhere" by Ice King. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Um, oh, and can I just say, really looking forward to the Fiona and Cake special that's coming up. Donald, Donald Glover, Glover is Marshall, Marshall Lee. Marshall Lee, yeah. I'm very excited, and the Fiona and Cake comic is great. Oh, it's amazing. That's what happens when you get the person. And, and Regular thing. Show also has a comic coming out, which is amazing. Yep. Is it going to be called Regular Comic? Uh, it's still called Regular Show. <laughs> God so, damn it. It a, should be Regular the, Comic. There's a branding issue there, you, so you understand. <laughs> anyway, uh, Brian, would you like to do the honors? We need an adjective. Um, flubby. Hex, give me a noun. Dog. Oh, I, God damn it. Come on. God. <laughs> Gotta go on, man. <laughs> Doug, part of the body? No. Okay. <laughs> Tail. Tony, what give me... What body are you working with? <laughs> a dog's. <laughs> Tony, give me a uh, noun. <laughs> Glampire. <laughs> this fits with the Adventure Time universe. Glampire. I can see that. It's like, like Blastronaut. That guy was a badass. <laughs> So I've got a, I've got an adjective. Um, let's see. Uh, let's uh, let's just let's do Harry. Back to you, Brian. We've got a verb ending in ing. Uh-huh. Fine. Hex, I need an adjective. Purple. Doug, give me a noun. Boin loins. <laughs> <laughs> you said boin loins. Yeah. I'm thinking Ice King here. This is <laughs> okay. Just double checking. Tony, noun. Dingo. Dingo was his name. Oh. <laughs> Which is the first, the first episode. First episode. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then, they find a small child by episode five, and Dingo eats the baby. I uh, got a verb, it's gonna be stab. Wow, okay, getting a little violent here. Uh, perhaps plural, we should stop talking about lightning dogs. Plural, plural noun, Brian. Blankets. Hex, a noun, please. Tesla coil. Doug, adverb. Uh stupidly <laughs> that's appropriate tony adjective round okay i need a noun crystal laser plural noun brian uh nations i like it Just and uh need a noun hex oh i got the perfect one because i was uh listening to peak freaks earlier oh our, our twin peaks episode yeah cream corn <laughs> <laughs> well, Gar- you, you want me to write cream corn or you want me to write gar gar zambonesia <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick with cream gar- garmin bozia <laughs> It's Cream diff- corn princess word. is showing up next season. I accidentally skipped over something. We need an exclamation. How about just oh glob, glob. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, Doug, you can uh, you gonna lay this on us, man? Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm not. Uh, this is my first real attempt at a an Ice King impression, but I'm I'm gonna try my best. But reading this also a cold reading, so it's a cold reading. First uh, attempt uh, at an impression. Uh, so let's just remember, reading. all of us are judging you. Okay. okay. Also, it's Ice King, so it should be a cold reading. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> don't. <laughs> All right, this one's called Why Don't You Love Me, Princesses Everywhere by Ice King. Dear Flubby, Princesses of Abu, what does a single dog like me need to do to get a bride around here? I've racked my nose thinking up ways to win your love, but you keep saying, Glob, get away from me, you psycho glampire. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my long, hairy beard that's scaring you? <laughs> because I tried flying it off once, and you thought I was too nice. It's my pointy purple nose on my freezing. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, is it my pointy purple nose on my freezing? 
<laughs> oh, okay. I have to. I have to. I have to. Okay. Muscle through, to dog. Muscle through. That's gonna take. Here we go. Hmm. Is it my pointy purple nose or my freezing blue boy loins? <laughs> you shouldn't judge a. D- <laughs> you shouldn't judge a dingo by its cover, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, I may stab you. <laughs> I may stab you from your home and lock you up behind steel blankets on occasion. I'm turning into Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> but it's only because I want to tie the Tesla coil and make you my stupidly beloved wife. Is that so wrong? I have to buy insurance now. <laughs> How I wish I could embrace you in sub-zero round hug. Princesses can't you see I'm a heart made of a crystal laser? I walk a million nations to hypnotize you into saying I do. It's just the kind of cream corn I am. Bravo. Bravo, Doug. Truly, that shall be a reading for the ages. Well, we've got also we've- to Godfrey. <laughs> That's a good Godfrey. <laughs> oh, yeah, I figured the, it was moving to Godfrey, so my instinct must, well must have been, it. yeah, just must have, just take it. If it's yeah. going good, run with it. Yep. <laughs> That's, that's a, that was a good move. It was a good move. So we got a whole book of those. We, we made you more in the future. Yes, uh, uh, let us know how you feel I, about I, that. Freezing we, blue boy lines. <laughs> Man, you know what? Oh I don't, care, I don't care if people want it or not. We got to do a few more of those as perks. <laughs> okay. We will we'll record some, and if we do, you, you'll know about it. Uh, before we go, before we go, we got to give some shout outs to some amazing people who've helped support the show. Uh, the kind of you know, uh, if if these become perks, then they would then you would have gotten them in the mail. Uh, so I enjoy reading them. <laughs> <laughs> nerdy show is of course a listener supported program it's a listener supported network it's it's all up to you we have a perk drive every single month and we need to at least raise three hundred dollars in order for us to stay alive that's all it covers all of our service costs and everything i gotta give a shout out to uh the first three people who've donated this month february 2013 uh kevin wise said uh, i wish it was more but here's what i can send keep up the good work thank you so much man Berto Elkon said, fancy new homepage, Nerdy FM, and the end of book two in one week. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> Thank you, Berto Elkon. You're a good guy. Yeah, and in fact, uh, if for those fans of uh, D&D out there, that was not the finale of book two. That was part one of the finale of book two. So uh, get excited for more later. The second part gets even finale or <laughs> if you can imagine that oh. um, and uh, Mauron uh, wrote in saying, uh, monthly subscription for D&D, price of admission. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much, and uh, also Big Bad Shadow Man sent us uh, some similar D and D love. Uh, I I do much appreciate it when uh, when people are like, "This is specifically for this." I love it, and uh, hey, I mean, if you want to look at it as a subscription fee, a lot of work does go into them, and we really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Big Bad Shadow Man, and everybody else who helped support this podcast. Also, props to everybody who's uh, purchased the Dungeons and Doritos soundtrack. You know, it's a it's pay what you want up on Bandcamp, and it's original music by uh, our uh, D and music crew, Stevo from uh, Overclock Remix, and uh, amazing uh, new composer on the scene, uh, Ryan McQuinn. Ryan. Shark Hunter McQuinn. Yeah, Shark Hunter is our nickname for him. He doesn't know that still. And I just um, gotta, I gotta. <laughs> to those of you listen, to those of you who make this music, and of course to everybody here, my favorite of the D and D soundtrack so far is Jennifer's. <laughs> Which is also the, the I use it as a theme music for Atomic Robo Nuts and Bolts now. So. I, I I know that, and it it brings a smile to my heart every time. <laughs> we also have some updates since our last episode, episode 122. We've got some more information about the Minecraft science fiction build-a-thon. Oh, we, boy. We've got, a new, we've got a contest we're running right now. It's awesome. It's on our Minecraft server, the server of awesome. And uh, basically, we're inviting you to come and build something amazing on the server. For the first time ever, some guest judges will judge your product. And uh, there are some amazing prizes that you can win. We went over them in detail last episode. And you can check them out at the uh, the Nerdy Show contest page or or via the Minecraft page as well. Basically, the way it works is you build something awesome and science fiction themed, any genre or whatever. It could be conceptual, could be sprite art, could be a replica of something from uh, from science fiction. Put it on the server, post it to the forums. We judge it, and maybe you'll win. It gets it's it's more complicated than that. Please follow the rules. Obviously, that makes it easier for all of us. First, second, and third place all get amazing prizes and. They get to choose from a prize cache, uh, which this time around are different packs of cool stuff. We've got the Aliens pack, 
with uh, an alien theatrical poster uh, and two aliens colonial marines uh, bandanas. The gentleman's accessory pack with a bunch of cool stuff, um, like wearable stuff, like an Assassin's Creed uh, inflatable tomahawk and a Bioshock Infinite top hat. Star Wars fun pack. Princess Leia hairbun Im- earmuffs. A Star Wars Dark Empire 2 embossed metal cards. And, uh, and debuting a new pack. The contest is now co-sponsored by Fangamer, the incredible yeah. fan-made fan apparel. And, and Fuck yes. Yeah, basically Fangamer's awesome. They, they make incredible apparel based on all kinds of your favorite um, video game properties. They recently did the merchandise for two-player productions Mojang documentary on the history and the development of Minecraft. And for their Kickstarter, they developed an, a bunch of Minecraft merchandise that was only available through there. There's a couple things on the site right now, that, um, such as they've designed the DVD packaging, they have some shirts and so on. But there's some things that were only available as a part of this Kickstarter, except... They're also available in this contest. So we're what? happy to, um, to announce the Minecrafters pack, which you can choose from, featuring a wind-up creeper. Like, no joke, a wind-up creeper. You get uh, the, a DVD of two-player productions, Mo- Minecraft the Mojang Story. A holographic diamond, gold, silver, and redstone buttons from Fangamer. A creeper pin from Fangamer. A creeper tattoo, which actually came from Mojang, was given to me by their uh, community woman, Lydia at uh, PAX East last year. And in addition to that, there's also Fangamer perks scattered throughout first, second, and third place, like uh, Minecraft pin sets for everybody. In fact, uh, this has allowed us to offer up three honorable mentions, three runners-up awards, and you will get uh, Minecraft pin packs featuring redstone. But uh, first gets diamond, second gets gold, and uh, third gets redstone. Also, uh, there's now a t-shirt option. The contest is also co-sponsored by Terminator the Second, the Shakespearean production of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, you will be able to choose from either a Terminator the Second shirt or a uh, Crafter's Crest shirt, one of the fan game Minecraft shirts. Basically, the way it works is first place has first has first dibs on it. We have two Minecraft shirts available. We have one Terminator shirt available. They get to pick which one. Second place gets to choose <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's, that's the new stuff that's available. Um, definitely check out the contest page. Check out all the cool stuff you can win. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what everybody does. It's the, a lot of freaking prizes, man. It is It is a lot yeah. of prizes. Not uh, only that, but we know how much these guys like Minecraft, so we put some Minecraft in their Minecraft, so that when they're Minecraft, they can have their Minecraft. Yeah, it's, it's really meta. Um, <laughs> so our, uh, our, our guest judges are um, Marshall Weber of Husky Jackal Theater, the guys behind Terminator the Second, and also Charlie Verdon of Fangamer. They, yeah. They're going to help us decide oh, the winners. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's been on the show a couple times, and we're also going to have uh, Marshall dance, Weber buddy. of... of uh, of, of Terminator the Second, he's going to be on the show uh, sometime in the future. Probably when we judge these, um, when, when we judge these guys, he's going to be on the show. Awesome. So look forward to that. So 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 we'll have him for Judgment Day. <laughs> yes, it will be. It will be Judgment Day. I think. I think if we don't call the episode ding, ding. that, it'll definitely make that joke. We'll definitely see um, the light of day. Yeah, drop the ball on that one. Yeah. Well, anyway, drop the bomb. It, it happened. So uh, thanks for listening to Nerdy Show. Uh, you got some exciting things coming out this week. Every day of the week, we got new programming. We got a hex grid this week. Damn. We got maybe the biggest drop of all this week, the uh, first episode of the second season of Ghostbusters Resurrection. I'm, I'm excited. a little excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> You're excited. I'm tired, but I'm glad to have it and, done. And I, I've, uh, I've listened to it already, and it, was, it is worth the wait. It's amazing. I, can't, I cannot wait for the second part. Uh, also, uh, Derpy Show and um, Nerdy Show Prime, actually. Big, uh, big release this week, so uh, get excited for all that stuff. Is the Nerdy Show Prime based on Lightning Dogs? That's coming later. Yeah, we maybe, still maybe. have to develop it, damn you. I have concept sketches to do. We need to get in touch with the team of animators. We need to get Paul Nola North and yep. John DiMaggio <laughs> and David Bowie Joe, and Joe. Tress McNeil because Tress McNeil has to be our, our Chitara. It's just the way it's got to go. We've yeah, gotta we're, we're going to have to develop. We're going to have to have a group meeting after this and really flesh out this uh, light, the lightning dog situation here. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening. If you got any uh, lightning dogs fan art you want to you want to show us anything, uh, just uh, put it up on the on the nerdy show forums. And uh, and um, if I like it, I'm going to steal it and incorporate it into the official art. That's how it works. <laughs> Hex, Hex will tell you. Yep. That's a, that is how that is God how it damn works. Thief. <laughs> Don't blame me for doing your ideas better. <laughs> Anyway, uh, th- thanks again for listening. If you want to support the show, um, just go to the the support page on the. <laughs> I'm sorry, lightning dog. Uh, lightning dog. Really, instead, really... instead of mouse or robots, can they be fleas? <laughs> the design wouldn't have to change that much. <laughs> they just jump really high. Flea yeah. robots. They're Flea like robots. nanobots. <laughs> eh? You see? Oh man! Oh, I think we need a cl- more clever name. Oh man, we got We got to watch out. We got it. We got it in this episode. Okay, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, bye, I'm Cap. Bye, I'm Hex. 
Bye, I'm Brian. Bye, I'm Doug. And I'm bringing up the rear. I'm Tony. Oh, uh, still get away from my rear. But what do you Stop got for us, Hex? Me, Hex. Uh, I got actually a collab by Beefy and MC Lars. This is Uncanny, and it uh, heavily samples the X-Men theme song from the old X-Men cartoon, and uh, it talks about their experiences watching it. Excellent. Excellent. Enjoy. Thanks for listening to Nerdy Show. Nerdy Show is made possible by a comic shop, Nerdapalooza, my footmen, and the generous support of listeners like you. How nice it is that you have money to give. As listener-supported entertainment, we rely on you to keep this and other shows on the Nerdy Show Network alive by telling a friend, rating and reviewing us on iTunes, or making a contribution in our monthly support drive, which helps our valets. Very much so. Any size contribution gets you exclusive Nerdy Show audio and images and lets you participate in our monthly support drives. Just go to nerdyshow.com slash support to chip in. For more episodes of Nerdy Show as well as other fine programming, community forums, videos and articles, and more, head over to nerdyshow.com. You can subscribe to all Nerdy Show Network podcasts via the iTunes Store. And for the latest news, follow us on all your favorite social networks. We can save the Abbey together. 